For nearly as long as there's been an oil and gas industry in the United States, there's been a dilemma about how to responsibly dispose of the massive volumes of dirty, briny water produced during the process of getting that oil and gas out of the ground. Since the 1930s, a widespread alternative to disposing of this water into surface streams and rivers has been the use of underground injection wells, or injecting the water under pressure deep into porous sandstone or limestone formations, a safe distance from underground sources of drinking water. But that old reliable option might be nearing the end of its shelf life. Put the water back where it came from has always been the mantra of the oil and gas industry and has been used for years and years and very successful. The problem has become, as the United States becomes more independent producer, you see the number of wells being drilled, you've got the new unconventional plays, the Marcella Shell, the Utica, the Balkan, uh, all these other plays, um, the United States is now becoming a net energy exporter and becoming very close to being 100% independent, which is great news. The uh, the, the downside of it is that the volume of waste, the volume of brine, has increased dramatically. Underground injection is, is a common method of disposal, uh, but the more water you get from the more drilling operations that are taking place out there, uh, the, the fewer opportunities there are to do underground injection. And, and underground injection itself, uh, in some areas of the country, is a little bit controversial. It can cause seismic activity, for example, uh, if, you, if, if you try to put too much water in, in, in one place too quickly. In fact, underground injection is widely believed to be the reason Oklahoma recently surpassed California as the number one state for earthquakes in the United States. This tally from the U.S. Geological Survey shows the number of earthquakes in Oklahoma has increased every year since 2009, with more than 2,000 magnitude 3 and above. Oh. Oh. That means more of the bigger ones, like this 4.3 magnitude quake last December in Edmond, Oklahoma. The U.S. Geological Survey says most of it can be linked to oil and gas production, but not fracking itself, rather the disposal of wastewater the salty, toxic byproduct that's disposed of deep in the ground. In response, the state of Oklahoma imposed tough regulations limiting the amount of produced water that can be injected underground. And along with Texas, is reported to be considering a possible ban on injection wells. While those restrictions have reduced the frequency of earthquakes in Oklahoma, similar restrictions haven't fully made their way yet to most other parts of the country. But Randy Huffman, former secretary of the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection, predicts it won't be long. It's uh, becoming more highly regulated. It's not, a, I don't think underground injection is as highly regulated today as it will be. All the states have uh, underground injection programs and they regulate uh, underground injection of water. I really think that's something that when we, if, if we could look ahead a few years, we can see that becoming more of a challenge because the opportunities and the, and the places where it's, where we have the opportunities to inject a uh, large volume of water is just going to be more difficult and more challenging. I think the public outcry, especially, especially in areas where there's been an increase in seismic activity that is directly attributable to, uh, to this water being, being uh, forced into the ground. And that, that's what's happening and it's, and it's causing so much pressure underground that, that there's some seismic activity taking place. So I, I think that, that the, uh, you know, the public's demand not to pollute the water, the, the public's demand not to have my house vibrate because, uh, because we're forcing water underground uh, Having options other than that is, as I think, is the greatest opportunity. Enter Clean Water LLC, developers of a patented technology and process expected to revolutionize the treatment of produced water from oil and gas wells and provide a superior and more economical alternative to underground injection. Here at Clean Water LLC's pilot plant in St. Albans, West Virginia, that technology has been tested and proved effective. A technology that will allow the nation's oil and gas producers to transport large volumes of produced water into similar facilities and transport similar volumes of clean water out of them. What Clean Water LLC is doing with uh, their technologies, they're removing salts and salts are dissolved in the water and that's, that's the most challenging pollutant to remove from water, is something that's dissolved. Um, typical, typical treatment technologies are reverse osmosis, which is extremely expensive, 
in, in evaporation, which is extremely expensive. Uh, what, what the technology does that Clean Water LLC has is it removes the calcium and sodium chloride from the water so that the water is clean enough then to be discharged into the stream or the most practical use would be to reuse it because it, it's very clean. But to be able to remove salts without reverse osmosis and without a, a tremendous amount of energy to evaporate the water off of it is, uh, is really innovative. Innovative and significantly less expensive. Clean Water LLC Chief Technologist Tony Anderson explains the process that makes this system a potential game changer in the oil and gas industry. Well, current technologies actually use crystallization where the particles of salt are created as they remove the water. In the clean water method, we actually separate those two processes. In one section, we actually uh, remove the sodium chloride from the calcium chloride, and in a separate part, we uh, actually are able to concentrate instead of crystallize the uh, calcium chloride to a heavier solution. By being able to separate those two solutions, we believe we can use different heating techniques. We can actually use plate frame heat exchangers instead of uh, regular shell and tube heat exchangers because we have no solids being made. Uh, that's a space uh, savings, that's a cost savings. And then there's multiple other uh, savings because of you are not crystallizing. Not the least of which is that the Clean Water LLC system allows for extended run times of more than 300 days a year at 24 hours a day without salt plugging. And in addition to producing pure distilled water, the process results in other highly marketable byproducts that can generate additional revenue. Eliminating waste stream is the name of the game. Uh, salt by itself, if you had no market for it, becomes a waste stream, so then you have to dispose of it as a waste. But by having a market for it, being able to, to separate the sodium chloride and the calcium chloride in, into a, a more pure forms, uh, th those products can then be marketed and it reduces, uh, further reduces the waste stream. At the end of the day, you're actually producing clean water. So it's a, you're creating very little waste for every, uh, every barrel you produce, for example. If you have a plant that you, you clean, uh, you take in approximately 3,000 barrels of fluid a day, you'll have about 2,600 barrels of that as an end product of distilled water that can be used for numerous, numerous opportunities uh, that it can be reused. The ability to clean this water and, and make it make it very pure, remove almost all the pollutants and contaminants out of it, which gives them a, a fresh water source. It, pre it, it, it prevents them from having to go get water out of the river somewhere and haul it back in. Um, it's just a, a tremendous opportunity. Since the transportation of produced water is one of the biggest factors in the cost of treatment, the Clean Water LLC system is designed to be modular and flexible, giving producers options for improving transportation efficiency. So there's really two ways to do this system. One, you have the central facilities that you still truck water to. Uh, if that's the case, the beautiful thing about this way is if you haul in produced fluid, your dirty water, you can haul out clean distilled water for reuse, either in the fracking or, or to haul somewhere where it needs. So you're running trucks in full, you're leaving trucks that are also full. So you're not running empty, big cost savings. The other way is there is, a, there is the technology and there is a way to make this system mobile. So we are on, on a smaller scale, so it would actually be mobile. We could take it to sites and clean water on sites. To, to have it to be able to go into an area where there's a lot of water to treat, I think is, uh, is what's unique about it. It significantly reduces the overall cost of treating water. Is the, 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 the closer to your treatment facility that you are, whether it's on site or, or very close by, you know, in a, it, it, you could locate a, such a system within a, within a cluster of uh, well pads, uh, for example. So the, the, the less transportation you have to do with the water, the, the lower your treatment costs are. And to top it off, installing Clean Water LLC technology requires less upfront capital than you might think. We believe because of the way we can change the heating from crystallization to just actually concentrating a fluid, we were able to actually construct a lot of our plants probably as much as 40% cheaper on the capital side. So in the long term, there's less investment up front to clean much greater amount of water and you're not going to have the earthquakes, you're not going to have the, the, the frack slippage. Economics drives it all and, uh, and I think that's where this technology is going to come into play is, is uh, 
the cost of managing water, and I, I say managing water because it's more than just treating water. Uh, the cost of managing water is, uh, is really high, and, uh, and I think this technology, there's a place for this technology to help drive that cost down. This is the scramble for our industry and Clean Water LLC has actually solved the problem. And so we can do away with the UIC program. We could, this solves the issue of never having to put fluid back in the ground. It's a win-win. It's a great win for, it, for the industry because we solve our number one environmental issue. It's a great win on the environmental side because we're taking a waste product and we're creating a very clean, reusable product. If I can lower my cost of disposal, I can drill more wells, I can produce more gas, I can explore, I can develop, I can do all the things that I do as a geologist, as a producer. In doing so, that's always going to build up the tax base. That's about jobs. That's about energy independence in the United States.